It's about exchanges between two countries, the tourism, and the reflection of the popularity of other scenes, like K-pop music is very popular in Asia, and of course in China. So they're trying new scenes, and everyone wants new scenes in cosmetics. Now, as, um, as South Korea is taking this more, more of a leading role in China, what about actual local brands within China? How are they competing? Um, there are many local brands, and some of them are very serious, like Sephora is selling a couple of cosmetic brands originated from China, and this is kind of endorsement of what they do. Uh, there are two groups of customers in China in regards to the brands. Uh, Well-established and affluent customers, they shop at the malls, and they kind of oriented towards foreign brands traditionally. But the young people are crazy about new cool stuff. And this new cool stuff sometimes comes from mainland China, like Inner Herb. It's a very small brand with a long tradition. It's actually good for your skin. And that's why they prefer the distribution in supermarkets and some kind of drug stores. It's cheaper and cooler. Now, you mentioned Sephora, and recently they uh, teamed up with uh, JD.com's website to get more of their products online. Is that the best way to get to Chinese consumers? Uh, Chinese consumers are very special, and they require very special attention. We know that Sephora is the biggest and luxury and high-end, and they are for about 10 years in China. They have physical stores, 175. Unfortunately, the average spending per person in China on cosmetic products is only $5 a year. It's more than 10 times less than in the Western world. And that's why building more stores, it means that they wouldn't get that much more money. And to distribute their products, they entered into strategic alliance with JD, which is a competitor to Alibaba. The secret here is something about fakes. Because Alibaba keeps on their line too many third-party stores. And, and they, that is an issue. People yeah. do want to make sure that they're getting the authentic product. And JD and, does not. <laughs> and in terms of exports, looking at South Korea, mm -hmm. it's it's had a problem with its exports. They have been dropping considerably. Mm -hmm. But overseas sales for the cosmetic industry actually rose 73% through this year in July. So why is it that cosmetics are leading the way when other sectors seem to be falling behind? It's all about our nature. This is a personal product, personal touch. And that's why even when the economy of China is slowing down and they have problems with the currency devaluation, and foreign stuff is becoming more expensive, but who would refuse to buy something for yourself? And a lot of people are trying and getting used to this, because assuming the past history, women in China just getting into this thing, and not yet up to many other things. For instance, perfumes are not selling well in China yet. So as we look ahead, if you're a brand in the US or France, you really want to tap into that Chinese consumer cosmetics market, what would your advice be? Well, the advice is always goes through Hong Kong, but um, there are also opportunities to do it online. The country is becoming crazy about online purchases because it's much cheaper. That's why probably Sephora is doing the right step forward.